G'day everyone, Yoda here from RC Skunk Works. Uh, recently we put up a video of, of me flying the uh, beautiful Freewing F14. And on uh, the video it's got smoke, uh, which I'm using an LX um, smoke missile, one use only. Uh, and I also mentioned I'm using a gyro. I've had a few questions on what gyro and what setup, so I just thought I'd pop the lid off this and have a look at the spaghetti of wires here on the uh, F14. Running two batteries, obviously, a um, fair bit of RF noise and all that sort of stuff, so I've got a, a setup with a receiver with three satellites. One of them stuck right in here amongst it all. That's okay. Another one stuck beside all the batteries. It seems to be working all right. The main one, I'm sure, it's working right up the front, away from all the noise. And I got that as far forward as I could get it. Very important thing, obviously, guys, because there's a lot going on. You can throw a gyro in the mix. Yeah, good luck, little receiver. Anyway, this one's working just fine. One day I will get in there and clean up the spaghetti wires, but at the moment I'm just enjoying flying it, and it's all working beautifully. Anyway, so I'm using a free wing gyro, as you can see in there. Standard free wing gyro. I have found some issues, just a little bit aside, with the free wing gyros on the newer type receivers. Uh, I tried one on a new spectrum, very high resolution, eight channel receiver and it just wouldn't be compatible. We had the same issue on the field with a guy that had a, a very new Futaba receiver. Anything that has super high resolution doesn't seem to be compatible with these gyros, so just watch that guys. If you've got anything that's um, fairly standard, like this This is an old JR922, it works just perfectly. Many of my Spectrum older receivers all work fine, so just got to just watch out for that. Anyway, what I did to fit the gyro, and I wanted it close to the C or G, I didn't want to run a super amount of wires up to the front here. The ideal spot is right up the front, because there's plenty of room, but it would have meant an absolute mess of wires trying to get back to the receiver. So I opted to put it down here amongst it all, uh, underneath the hatch. As you can see, to make it fit and to allow for the height with the wires and the plugs and everything, I actually took the free wing PCB or plug-in board out, took out the plywood former that was under it, got the Dremel tool and went down as far as I dared. You'll, you'll know when you go too far, I just keep sticking a pin through and finding that you know, allow at least another centimeter of foam below it. And I just took it down low enough where I was satisfied the plugs and everything were gonna fit in. So I dremeled out, and then I uh, used a little bit of contact adhesive and put the board back down. I threw the screws in there just for good measure, just to, just to make sure it was bedded in properly. Then I made a little L-shape plywood former and sat that so it was about the same level as the free wing board and it allowed me to mount the gyro nice and securely with screws so I mounted the plywood and actually glued that to the foam and then I screwed the free wing gyro onto that board and it gave me just enough height for everything. I originally thought that I could use this part here but it wasn't low enough I hit these these um, bearers here so I revised it that's why I've cut out a little bit here and had a look so just forget about that guys, uh, if you want to do it, my suggestion is lower this board, make a little plywood former, glue it in, then secure your free wing gyro on top of that. It works beautifully, it fits under the hatch without any issues, it doesn't contact the top of the hatch or anything. The settings I have on the pots for the free wing gyro, it's pretty similar to most aircraft that I fly with these gyros. Ailerons are fairly soft, they're down at about 30-35%. And I talk percentage when it's these little pots here. If you get the screwdriver, wind it right off to zero, and we're right around that's 100% to full on. So you can imagine 30-35% is down around that position there, not right around here. So I'm talking 30% to 35% for ailerons. About 40 to 45 percent on elevator and 50 percent thereabouts for the rudder. And that seems a pretty good setting for all the jets that I fly, but particularly for this one. It's definitely smoothed the whole situation out, the whole flight envelope out, but 
in particular with the wings folded it stops that little horrible wiggle that it's an aerodynamic wiggle that these things have with the wings closed and it's ironed that out now with the wings closed it feels really confident it feels solid you can do nice smooth aerobatics with it with the wings closed and like I say you don't get that horrible little jiggle up the, uh, <laughs> The guys who have these will know when you close the wings, the ailerons, or if you try and use roll, it gets this funny little oscillation up and it's, I'm sure, it's just air bouncing off places that really, um, it's, it's affecting it badly. And uh, let's face it, full size stuff, they all fly with computers, so why not us? And it really does make it look nice. So have a look at the video of the flight that we've got up there of the F-14. There'll be more coming through Extreme Hobby in Australia. We're going to do some more filming and put some really professional videos up of this particular girl flying. And I hope you enjoy it. Any questions, just please contact me on the uh, RC Skunk Works YouTube um, channel. Thanks for watching, guys, and have fun with your F-14s.